Hi everyone, my name is Pierre Harry, and I'm a product specialist with Aviva Select California. In this video, I will show you how you can manage some of your PyVision backend settings by using the PyVision administration tool. So some quick background first, PyVision uses two websites. The main front end one is the main application website that you see right here for creating and visualizing displays. And this is the one that most users are using or are at least familiar with. But there's a second website <clears throat> called the administration website here. And you can use this for configuring and maintaining some of the backend settings of your PyVision environment. To access this tool, navigate to your PyVision URL, which is the first part right here, where localhost in my case is the web server, but in your case, it might be called something different depending on how you set up your PyVision environment. And then add a forward slash admin. This will take you to the administration portal right here. Keep in mind that in order to access and configure these options, you need to have the right access privileges. So to access you know, this portal in the first place, you need to be a part of a local Microsoft Windows users group that is called PyVision Admins, which you can see inside of the computer management group right here. For Windows, there's three groups, PyVision Admins, PyVision Users, and PyVision Utility users. During installation, these three are installed when you inst install PyVision initially. And the PyVision admins group is the group of users that will have access privileges to this administration portal. And you know, since this is usually configured during the install, the user that runs the installation usually is the one that is initially added to this group. So back to the admin website, there's a few useful tools that you can use inside of this portal. The first one is the overview page where you can see an overview of your PyVision management settings. So this is information like which PyVision SQL database you're connecting to with your PyVision project, which Py data archive you're connecting to, and uh, you know which asset servers or AF databases are allowed and that you're connecting to as well as information on the PyVision and PyAF client versions down here. All of this information here reflects how you set up your particular PyVision environment during the you know, initial installation inside of the Py server and Microsoft IIS. But if you wanted to switch your PyVision database on the fly, so it's different from how it was configured during installation and the initial setup, you can click on Manage Configuration here, which will bring you to the Configuration tab. And this is where you can select the you know, previously created SQL databases uh, that are associated with the SQL servers that uh, this environment has uh, connectivity to. And you can even you know, enter in information manually here to create new PyVision SQL databases inside of SQL Server Management Studio. So if I have the SQL Server selected, I could go ahead and actually, you know, create a new database and then saving it would create this new database inside of SQL Server Management Studio. But I'm not going to do that because I already have this all configured uh, for this demo. And you can see here, once I you know, went back to the PyVision database that was already created, it was happy with this uh, green status check mark because it's connecting to a database that already exists that it knows. So similarly, you can also edit data archive locations, which is the second one here. Data servers refers to the data archives. Uh, and so here you will find the data archives from the known servers table on the PyVision web server. And you can test the connection and see the green check mark for the status to show that it was a successful connection. You also want to make sure that the allowed checkbox right here is checked to ensure that you'll be able to use data from the right Pi data archive inside of PyVision. You can also see information pertaining to you know, the user's access privileges right here. Again, the Pi admin uh, privilege that was uh, created inside of the Pi system management tool. 
And so you can see that, you know, right here, this is me and I'm a Pi admin, which is why I'm able to configure these inside of the administration portal. Uh, and that was something that was previously mapped out inside of the Pi server. So next we can look at the asset servers tab. Again, you can access this by, you know, going to overview and then manage configuration for asset servers databases. And this is where you can verify connectivity to an AF server. And you can see that I have some failed connections from previous attempts to other AF databases that no longer, no longer exist. So the connections don't work for those since I deleted them. And so it shows failed test connection. Um, but you can see that the one that does work is the one right here, which is the proper database that I'm currently actively managing and using. So to ensure that you'll be able to connect to the right AF server, you want to make sure that the database, uh, that the green check mark for the status is, is green, right? To show that the connection is working. So it's similar to how we set up the Pi data archives from earlier because this will allow you to get data inside of PyVision from a Pi AF server, while the data servers and setting these up enable you to get data from Pi data archives inside of PyVision. So this is for the Pi data archives. This is for the Pi asset framework servers. You can use both inside of PyVision. And keep in mind that you can have multiple databases for each AF server, um, but I'm just showing one of them right here, Waterworld demo, and I'm selecting that one. Okay, so now let's talk about the import folder management, which is the third tab down. This is used if you wanted to, you know, import Pi process book import folders. So here it's all empty because I didn't migrate anything from Pi process book for this particular situation. But if I did use the migration utility, here's where I would uh, specify specific folders from Pi process book to make them viewable inside of Pi vision. So what I would do is I would put the path of the process book import folder right here, like C, you know, wherever that folder is. And I would give it an alias, like process book displays. Uh, so of course I would need to have the, you know, proper read access to these folders to add them to this page. So you would need to make sure that the application pool account up here has the proper read access to these folders. And if it does, you can go ahead and import process book displays and view them inside of PyVision by using this tool. You could also go to display defaults tab to manipulate what some of the viewing options are in the displays. So for example, I could change one of the time bar time ranges to a different time range. So like I could select the one day option and change it to one month and then change the eight hour to one, you know, eight days, for example, right? And then change the the value right here. And then if I click save, what it'll do is it will update the, uh, the time bar on all the PyVision displays. So you have full control over the different time ranges. Some of the other options are changing the default multi-state colors. Here are the color options, as well as event colors by severity, right? You see the severity tiers right here, as well as the acknowledge color, you can change that as well. And then last but not least, you can reset all these settings, remove the custom ones and reset them back to original defaults by clicking on the reset button right here. Let's not save them, yep. So user access levels is useful because this is where you can specify who gets publisher and explorer privileges inside of your PyVision project. So remember that a publisher is a user that has full access to the application and can save displays, while an explorer only has access to displays and can change you know, how they view them, like changing the time bar, but they can't save or share them. So essentially, publisher is read and write, and explorer is read only. These are the two role types inside of PyVision specifically. So a publisher won't necessarily have admin rights. So they won't necessarily be able to configure these admin settings, even though they have essentially write capabilities for displays inside of PyVision. So I'll explain what I mean here. There's two options. You can give user access control through the local Microsoft group or through AF identity groups. So 
This first one will provide all members of the local group PyVision users with publisher access levels. So this is a PyVision users group. It's a local group that you'll find inside of your computer management uh, area right here on your local node. And so when you install PyVision, it should have created these three groups right here, PyVision admins, PyVision users, PyVision utility users. The accounts associated with PyVision admins have administrative rights so they can access this administration portal, but the users and utility users do not. But what you would do by selecting this option is you would give publisher access to all of the PyVision users. So it would be on a computer management local user basis. And you could actually map these to AF identities as well. They're not in this case. And again, that's a topic for a different video, but those could be mapped to identities inside of the uh, Pi system management tool. But the second option that you have here is to use those identities directly. So if I click that, I can choose publisher or, or access levels for members of AF identities. So these are the available AF identities as they are defined right here. So you can see the same ones right here. And so essentially, I could go ahead and select specific identities and either assign them as publishers or as explorers. So you have two options, either doing it on a local group uh, basis for the PyVision users that are inside of the Windows computer management uh, area right here, so local Windows group, or do it by PyAF identities, which is inside, of, which is configured inside of the Pi system management tools. Another thing you can do in the administration portal is to clear user settings, to clear particular users' favorites, uh, also display usage, so on and so forth. You can also set a, and the, the way you would do that is you would just select the user and then clear settings. You could also set a database search room so that a particular database, if you have multiple databases, can be selected so that the user's search route will be to that particular node which will you know, make it more efficient to retrieve the data if necessary. So it'll tailor how they navigate through the asset hierarchy inside of PyVision. This is taking a while to load, so I'll get back to this in a second. <clears throat> and then the last thing you could do is restrict database access. So for certain users, you can select the user and you can choose right here, which database uh, is assigned to each user. So if I had multiple users, there's only me right here, I could choose to uh, restrict uh, certain users to certain databases by using this tool right here. And then back to PyVision to show you the what I was talking about. So if you select a database search route for a particular user, it would affect how they view the databases inside of their search pane inside of PyVision. So you can you know, optimize this for more efficient retrieval for certain users if required. The next thing is display management. Let's go ahead and leave and not save anything. This is where you can reassign the ownership of certain displays from one user to the next. In my case, I'm the only user here, so I only have you know, myself, but you know, if I were to uh, you know, reassign from me to a different user, what that would do is that would change the ownership of the displays that I've created to this new user. And finally, we have a report section. Here is where you can generate some reports to show some useful metrics as they pertain to your PyVision project. So you can see some of the options here like display, you know, usage information, get the amount of you know, publishers and explorers, the two that I find the most useful are, you know, listing all the PyVision users. So you can keep track of your total list of users to know how many of their, your named users are being used. And also users who have accessed PyVision within a specific time range. This one is uh, useful in context as well, because even though you might have, you know, a list of PyVision users, not all of them are actually using PyVision regularly, right? So using this report, is how you can see who's an active user and who's an inactive user to keep track 
right? So you can use this report and, you know, possibly get, you know, change certain users so that users that aren't using anymore, you can reassign their seat to a new user that, you know, would be using PyVision, right? And this is based on a certain time range. So let's show the generation of this report. So for example, let's do this one. Users who have access to PyVision within a specific time range. Let's do year to date. And you can view it right here. And in my case, it's pretty straightforward. It's just one line item because I'm the only user. And here's the amount of times that I've accessed, uh, accessed excuse me, PyVision on a per month basis, as well as year to date. You can also export this information into a CSV file, which you can see right here. And then the last option is a detailed export into a CSV file. And this just gives you more detailed information um, on your active users. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you next time.